Let's take a first look at the MobaPad M073. We love the Nintendo Switch and there's nothing more fun than taking a look at different Joy-Cons or controllers. So we've already covered the MobaPad uh, M6 Gemini and the M8 alternative Joy-Cons, so check those videos out as well. But now we've got the M073 controller and I'm super hyped to check this out because it looks awesome. Like it looks really, really cool. I actually quite like the packaging. You can see the uh, controller inside. So this is by MobaPad. MobaPad did send us this for free, but we're under no obligation to sway my opinions and I'm always honest here. So yeah, this is the controller just here. Let's take a look at the box. So we've got Japan Alps joysticks. So those I think are the same joysticks found on the uh, the MobaPad M6 Gemini and the M8. It says 40 hours of battery. So this is a wireless controller. It works not only on Switch, but on PC, Android and iOS as well. It's got NFC, which is crazy. It's got turbo. We've got motion sensor. So six axis gyro. It's got macro ability as well. Uh, what else have we got? We've got 10 joystick sensitivity and turbo model adjustment function. So I'm guessing you can adjust the turbo and maybe the joystick sensitivity. Five levels of vibration. So we've got rumble. Uh, we've got power delivery, high speed charging, which is crazy. We've got USB-C charging by the look of it. And there's a Bluetooth adapter, which I guess you need to use on all of these as well. So let's get into it. Okay, so I've got into it from the bottom and I must say that was the most inconvenient packaging to open because there's all these like tabs on the bottom here and they did not want to open. So let's just get everything out if we can from the bottom. So this is what we get inside the box. So straight away, we get a user manual, which is always nice to see. I don't think it's in English at all. No, it's not. It's all in Chinese by the look of it. I might be able to use Google Translate. Oh, no, 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 wait, wait, wait. No, there's actually English. We keep going, there is English. So it shows here we've got vibration, screenshot button minus, blah, blah, blah. I'll go over all that in a second when we look at the controller. So there's quite a lot of information there. I'll be sure to check this out before I do a full blown review. Like I said, this is like the first look unboxing and my first like impressions of the controller. And then later we will come back and do a full blown in-depth review. So if you wanna see that, go down there and make sure you subscribe. So we get a USB cable. It's a USB A to USB C just there, which is quite nice to see. I'm always a fan of USB C. Then we have this, which is the USB-A dongle. So I'm imagining you have to plug that into the switch dock for this to actually connect. Again, during the full blown review, I will test all that out and sort of give my opinions on it. This might just be for iOS, Android and PC, but I've got a feeling you're gonna need this to use it on the switch, which implies that you can't use this like in handheld mode. You know what I mean? With the uh, tabletop mode with the switch, because if you have to use the USB-A dongle, well, then it seems like this will only be used for when the switch is docked but again i'll check that all out for the full blown review but this is the controller and straight away oh wow like that is weighty like that that's a weighty controller and i like that because there's nothing worse than having like a real flimsy like light cheap feeling controller this is weighty i'd even say that it might be heavier than the actual official switch pro controller and oh, i'm liking it like I'm liking it. First impression, that is comfortable. Those joysticks, oh, they feel so good. Oh my days, I'm really happy about this. The D-pad is nice. The D-pad is nice. <laughs> the D-pad is nice. It's nice, right? We've got a concave sort of D-pad here and it rolls so nicely. Like that is, ah, oh, like that feels nice. It doesn't feel like the best D-pad in the world, but it definitely feels better than some of the others I've felt. I'm really, really liking the ergonomics of this. This feels lovely. Oh, wow, and look at those triggers. Look at those triggers. They've got this like awesome like etching on the top. So that's not like a printed design. That is actually in the plastic. That is feeling nice. And the buttons feel nice. They're not sticky. They're not sticky at all. The face buttons look overly large and I really like that. Let's have a go. Oh, they feel good. They feel good. I'm getting impressed with this. All these little buttons everywhere are clicky. I'll go over what they do in a second. I'm, I'm really digging that. I'm, I'm liking it. I'm liking it so far. I'm really digging these. 
And I must say, this, the aesthetics of this is lovely. Like, look at it. It looks great. There's no back paddles or anything, but that's kind of good. Keeps it a bit more simplistic. But like, in terms of like the ergonomics and the design, like that is pretty cool. Like it feels nice in the hand. You've got the USB-C on the top. You've got both triggers on both sides there with that nice etching. You've got nothing on the bottom there. There's just this little bit here, which I guess is for... I'm not sure actually, it doesn't actually show anything. You've got the turbo button here. So this is gonna be for assigning turbo. So if you don't know what turbo is, you can assign turbo say like, let's say to A. And then when you press and hold it, it will spam that button over and over and over until you let go of it. Or you can do it the other way around. So you just press A once and then it will keep pressing until you do it again and then you can cancel it out. So that's what turbo does. You've got a, a settings button here, which I guess is for macro. Since it doesn't have any other like, assignable buttons i have no idea what the macro is for so maybe you can assign like a macro to any button so that you can press like a or double tap a or something and it will do like a series of events i'm not too sure i will have to check that out before we do the full-blown review then we've got the plus and the minus button you've got the screenshot button you've got a wireless button so i'm guessing that is for it to connect to the bluetooth dongle here I'm guessing it might be that you can connect this to the switch without that dongle. I'm not too sure. I will check that out in the review. You've got a rumble button. You've got that macro button that I've already shown. You've got the home button and that's pretty much it. That is pretty much it. But I'm really liking the colorway. This reminds me of like, I don't know, like an SNES, the Super Nintendo sort of like colors or even maybe like the PlayStation 1 if you want to look at it that way. It's kind of like this nice gray sort of color. I'm really digging the red Alps joysticks look there with these like gray sort of accenting. Like I do really like that. I mean, it looks a little bit cluttered with all these extra buttons over the top, but, 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 but it feels really nice. Like that feels lovely. And these sticks feel super good. And I must say, like, first impression wise, these feel nicer sticks than the ones found on the MOBA pad M6 and the M8, which is weird because they're exactly the same, right? They're all Alps joysticks. But for some reason, they just feel like they've got a little bit more resistance there and it does feel nice. Now, unfortunately on the M6 and the M8, well, at least on the M6 MOBA pad Joy-Con alternatives, they did have a bit of a dead zone. So I will have to test that out before the full blown review. And of course I'll include that in the actual review. But first impressions, I'm liking it. The D-pad's nice, the joysticks are nice. I like the oversized buttons. They feel nice and clicky, they don't stick. All the buttons are consistent. I'm really digging these triggers here, like with that sort of like textured feel because you really know that you're on there, you're not going to slip off. The ergonomics are really nice. I'm digging the design. I'm so glad that it's got all these functions. It's got turbo, it's got rumble, it's got macro, it's got six axis gyro, which is awesome. It's got NFC. It has NFC. So you can actually use your amiibos on it. So, you know, you can actually use amiibos on this controller, whereas I can't even think of any other third party controllers that aren't the official like Switch Pro controller that has NFC. So this having NFC so for use with like, uh, you know, actual Amiibos, that's awesome. Like that is really, really cool. So first impression wise, I'm really liking the look of this. And apparently it has 40 hours battery life according to the box. Again, I'll have to test that out, but I'm really liking it. I am really liking the look and feel of this. I really like the colorway design and everything else. So yeah, I'm digging this a lot. So before we do anything, go down there and subscribe because I will be doing a full blown in-depth review of this. However, for the meantime, if you're still looking for like pro controller alternatives, check out our Binbok review of the Binbok Pro Controller with crack as they like to call it here. So check that out. And that is another alternative sort of Switch Pro style controller. And that is our full blown review just here. So make sure you go and check that video out next and subscribe, subscribe first.